I think the funniest thing that anyone can say on this channel is that reading burnout is not real. Oh, it's real. It's reading 15 book fantasy series in a month. It's the myth. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back today to talk a little reading burnout and mostly how to avoid it. Well, for me, guys, there are several things that work because I get this, uh, this question quite a bit is, you know, how do you avoid reading burnout? Seems like you never have a reading slump. Guys, I have reading slumps all the time, but I wouldn't say I ever have burnout because I follow very, very simple rules, you know, switch authors, switch genres, stick to smaller series, things like that. But I'm going to kind of go into detail with some of my recommendations for things that can help you avoid burnout by switching between authors, genres, and series and some of the ones that I kind of fall back to whenever I feel like something like that might be coming. Yes, I absolutely believe that reading burnout is real. It doesn't necessarily a detraction on any kind of story or anything like that. I just feel like if you spend too much time in one world for a prolonged amount of time, you're going to start to get kind of bored of it. It's like when you try to, hey, someone's like, hey, this television series, is it great? It's great. It's like 19 seasons. You're not going to watch 19 seasons before you're like, I just want something else, right? It doesn't necessarily mean you're not enjoying it. Yeah, you're just going to kind of get a little tired of it after a while. So yes, I absolutely believe reading burnout is real. I've never understood why people will tell me that's not a thing, but hey, to each their own. For me, I do believe it is a real thing. So what do I do? I switch genres usually. That's the biggest thing. I think you, you spend too much time in one genre, you're going to kind of get complacent. You're going to kind of want something new. And I stagger if I'm reading two books at one time. Yes, I do usually read two books at a time to kind of make things. If I get kind of tired of one thing, hey, cool, I can kind of switch to this. But what I do is I make sure it is two very different genres. If I'm reading a fantasy book, I usually like to stagger it with a horror or sci-fi book or maybe a thriller or something like that. In case you start to start getting bogged down, I'm kind of bogged down going through this tr just journey with this crew on the ground. Hey, cool, let's go up to the stars for a little bit and that kind of give us a change of pace that we need. But here are some of my recommendations. I'm going to talk about authors first, then series, and then genres. And I'm going to kind of talk about why. Because people are already saying, well, you're talking about burnout and you're talking about series. It'll make sense. Trust me. Trust me. If you want to go along with me on this journey here, let's begin with authors. Now, for me, I say find an author that writes mostly standalones because that's the thing with fantasy. It seems like there aren't very many standalones. It's a lot of, you know, book one of a nine book series and things like that. Find an author who writes some, some books that are just standalones, you know, so you can kind of get used to just a smaller cast, one setting, things like that, because it's over and done, usually under 500 pages. That's why Stephen King is obviously my go-to for this. You know I'm going to talk about Stephen King here, but what makes Stephen King great in this regard is not only does he have standalone novels, but he also has novellas and he has short story collections. So basically whatever speed you're looking for, I think you can find something to kind of help you with that change of pace or help you, you know, just don't want something long and something you feel like you've got to commit your life to, to be able to get through. So King's obviously going to be the one that I'm going to recommend first, but you know, then there are also some in the thriller game. I love Michael Crichton and Blake Crouch for this because when you get the thriller, obviously you're going to have, it's usually a cast of less than 10 characters that you're kind of focusing on. One main character, maybe like a couple of supporting characters, and then just like a few big names along the way. And you can kind of be over and done. It's just page turners. There's no bloat whatsoever. It's usually just straight sugar. You can kind of just roll through it. I would get through a Crichton or a Blake Crouch book usually in a day or two because they are just the very essence of a page turner. You hear page turner all the time. People will sell you something. Hey, this 900 page book, it's a quick read. You're like, what? Well, with Blake Crouch, Michael Crichton, they're usually less than 400 pages and they are a quick read. But with Michael Crichton and Blake Crouch, it'll also leave you with something to think about after it's over. And that's why I do prefer those two authors when it comes to the thriller. You're still wanting maybe a little bit of horror or a little bit of fantasy vibes, but you don't want to commit to a long series or even a long book. I always tell people, go back to Robert E. Howard, go back to H.P. Lovecraft, because they both can write stories that are less than 30 pages long, and you feel like, wow, I got a whole novel's worth of material with those two authors. So there are just some of the greats. Obviously, Robert E. Howard, mostly known for Conan, but you know, he did, he did Solomon Kane, uh, he did Kang, he did all kind of Kang. <laughs> Cole. <laughs> King the Conqueror, Cole the Conqueror. I can see why I get those kind of confused there. Uh, but yeah, obviously those are really, really short stories and they are great, great characters. H.P. Lovecraft. I feel like 
If you haven't read any Lovecraft yet, you might go to it and be like, hey, this kind of feels a little archaic. Yeah, these stories were written almost 100 years ago, you know, or over 100 years ago. Robert E. Howard's almost 100 years ago. So yeah, they are going to seem a little different. But once you get used to their style, their stories have a lot of substance. And again, you don't have to overcommit because they are super short and you can read them in any order that you want to. You can just pick a random Lovecraft or a Conan story out of thin air and just go with it for 15, 20 pages and feel like you got a beginning, middle, and end of a story. And it's amazing what those two gentlemen could put into such a short little section there. There's obviously going to be many, many other authors, but that's the ones that I find myself falling back to whenever I feel like ah, I'm starting to get a little, a little bit of a slump is kind of rearing its ugly head. This is kind of where I'll roll to. Now a series. Now with this, I want to specify what I mean here. Find you a series with short entries. So I know that a lot of things with burnout is because you're committed to a long series. Well, a lot of those long series are eight, 900 page books each. I think if you find you a series where the books are really short and they can kind of work as standalones and being that you can take breaks between them, you can take long, long breaks and you can kind of have each book kind of feel like a beginning, middle and end, an open and closed story with some threads that they can continue with. I think that's the best way to go. And I've got three series I'm going to recommend for that. Obviously, guys, no secret here. The Dresden Files is one that I used while I was going through Wheel of Time. Well, the time has those long eight, 900 page books and you want something to kind of break up that monotony sometimes. And I always use Dresden Files because I felt like it was a good time. Each one was kind of a case and you kind of felt like you could have a beginning, middle, end. Sure, you had those plot points that were still kind of left open, but with the way the Dresden Files is structured, each book is kind of like the worst day of the year for Harry Dresden. And you can kind of go through that story and kind of just pick it up as you go along you know, taking these breaks in between them and it don't feel like you'll really lose anything. He does a good job of kind of catching you up if it's been, you know, a long, long break between the books. But those books work great. They do get a little longer. But I mean, even at the end, uh, I think uh, what some of the longest books were like maybe 500 pages. But Dresden Files books, man, they just, they fly by. They really do. And so most, most of the books are usually 400, 350 pages or less. You can kind of fly through those. And it's really, really great change of pace. And it's kind of a feel-good story for the most part. Look, bad stuff happens to Harry. Don't get me wrong. But most of them are you're having a good time. And you're going to feel like, hey, this is something I can kind of feel like I can fall back on when I'm struggling and just put on that comfortable pair of sweatpants and just kind of, you know, eat some bubble gum. You know, I kind of feel like that's how it goes with the Dresden Files. And I feel like, going, do you eat bubble gum or you chew bubble gum? I guess you chew bubble gum. Some people eat it. It doesn't really... Uh, Work out in the end, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, another series I would recommend, guys, is one I've kind of recently gotten into in the last year. This is uh, The Legend of Driss by R.A. Salvatore. Forgotten Realms, Dungeons, and Dragons. Now, Driss was a character I really had not even really heard of until I started this channel because I always just assumed that Dungeons and Dragons books, you had to be a big Dungeons and Dragons player, and I never really was. So I kind of uh, avoided them for the longest time. And I remember when first, someone first asked me in a live stream, hey, have you ever thought about reading Driss Duerden? And I'm like, is that a Malazan character? I had no idea what it was. After I finally gave uh, the Dark Elf trilogy a try, I loved it. I fell in love with with the Driss character. I loved Icewind Dale even more. I'm reading Legacy of the Drow right now as I'm recording this. Those books are just a great time. So much stuff that you love about traditional fantasy are poured in those books. Sure, nothing is going to reinvent the wheel, but you're going to be like, hey, this is why I fell in love with the fantasy genre in the first place. So many great, great things. If you are a Dungeons & Dragons player, I'm sure it's probably even better. For me, it's like, okay, I don't know what some of these creatures are, but you know, there's always an advanced Dungeons and Dragons guide, you know, online that you can look up and see what these creatures are. It's kind of a nice visual medium that you can look up a lot of the things. So it's so much artwork available out there to kind of help bring that series to life if you want to. And I keep recommending Drist to a lot of people. A lot of people are like, I don't want to get involved in a, a 40 plus book series. I get it, man. I get it. I, I understand. But again, with these, you can read each one. Like I think I read Icewind Dale over the course of like four months. Took a couple breaks between each book, and it it, it was it just flowed great that way. Uh, I love those, and each one of these has like these uh, little sub series trilogies or quadrilogies. You know, they kind of just break up into segments to where you can take long breaks. Like I took a year between Icewind Dale and Legacy of the Trail, and he's also like that the Jim Butcher. The he'll he'll recap a little things along the way. Never at a point that feels like, yeah, I know this already. Be like, oh yeah, that did happen. You know, two or three books ago, and he'll get, make sure that you remember those things. So uh, easy to pick up. And stop and pick up and stop whenever you want in Legacy of Dr or Le Legend of Drist. Legacy of Drist. I'm reading the Legacy right now, but uh, great series, great series, and I think it will kind of help 
with a lot of those times where you just want something quick and fun and if you need to remember why you loved the fantasy genre in the first place. And lastly, a series I recommend is going back to what I consider canon, but they now call legends. This is the Star Wars Expanded Universe novels. These guys, uh, I think what makes the Star Wars book so great is that you can read each of these series, much like you can with Driss or Dresden Files, at your own pace. You can take breaks. You can take uh, you know each book on its own. Again, there are series in there. You know, there are three or four books at a time. But again, you can take those breaks between those books and it doesn't really matter because they do each feel kind of standalone-ish. But you can pick up any Star Wars book really at any time and kind of figure it out. Now look, the great thing about these is you, all you need to see is the original trilogy to get into the Star Wars, uh, the, the EU novels. Now, I always tell people, I have a video kind of breaking down this because I get a lot. Where should I start with the Star Wars EU? With these, it, it really just depends on how much you've seen, how much you want to know. You can pick up just about anything and be like, okay, I, I don't know who this character is, where they come from, but the story you're reading is going to make sense. They're not going to be like, oh yeah, you should know everything about this character. They make it a way to where it's easily accessible to anyone, no matter how much you've read. As long as you know who Luke, Han, and Leia are, you know, 3PO and R2, you're going to be fine. You know, hey, Chewbacca, I know who that is. So I say that anything that you want to do with the Star Wars EU, you can there is a reading order that I recommend. And like I said, I've talked about that in another video, but those books are just, they're just a great time. You're just going to, yeah, I just want a space adventure, Star Wars. What's more of a space adventure than that? So uh, if you're exhausted with uh, what, what the Disney has done to the Star Wars universe, and you want to remember why you love Star Wars in the first place. Uh, hey, cool. You've got, you've got a nice little palate cleanser there and you've also got something that's going to help you avoid some burnout because I feel like you can pick up any of these Star Wars books and have a good time with it. And that's what I would recommend for series. Now, as for genres, this is the easiest one here. I recommend trying something other than fantasy. Now, with fantasy, it seems like the, you, there's so many series. The page counts are so high. Everyone feels like they have to, every author feels like they've got to write a doorstopper when it comes to fantasy. It just kind of goes hand in hand with the genre. So I would say recommend trying series, or sorry, genres that are other than fantasy for this. And that's why I are going to recommend several here. Horror, obviously, is going to be the first one because I feel like it's mostly standalones and it's usually a smaller cast. So you don't feel like you have to exert so much brain power learning the regions, learning, you know, armies, learning kings and provinces and things like that. All you really have to do is, hey, there's this small town in the middle of dipshit America and hey, this person's having this horrific event happen to them and here's a couple of people that are close to them that they're, you know, they've brought into this trouble with them. Uh, so I feel like that's really, really great. I've really gotten into Nick Cutter the last couple of years, uh, I read Little Heaven, and I read The Troop, and I love them quite a bit. So I know there's tons. I've, I've actually started being, I want to expand my horizons when it comes to horror authors outside of just Stephen King, you know. But I, I, I think that that is the best, like, standalone-ish. You want a quick little fright. You want a quick little character study. Uh, horror seems to be the genre that really provides those things and kind of sees what, uh, you know, what are the limits that the human mind can take. Science fiction obviously guys and i think it's because it's just it's it's otherworldly you know it doesn't feel like what you're going through in your day-to-day -day life obviously you know it's uh you know provides an escape to what you're going through down here on planet earth you know you can kind of go up to the stars go to other worlds and just kind of use your imagination quite a bit so i feel like classics like uh the martian chronicles by ray bradbury childhood's end by arthur c clark those are books that are going to be kind of a quick read but they're also going to make you stick in your head like i read childhood's end two years ago guys i still can't stop thinking about it just so many ideas are presented in some of these books and again smaller cast so you're able to get onto everything and again it's just pure imagination because you don't have to say hey i don't know the inner workings of the you know how the planet works here in this 14th century europe you know i feel like you can just completely go into a blind and have an enjoyable time with it but again sometimes you can get some of those things that are just kind of sticking in your head and you're never going to stop thinking about them and that's what just made the science fiction genre great back in the uh, the 50s and 60s, I think. As I am uh, learning a lot more myself, I know this one's going to kind of be met with resistance because I'm going to talk about middle grade or the dreaded young adult genre. I recommend this because I know that the word YA has become synonymous with uh, all those things that you know fantasy readers don't like anymore, at least probably the viewers of this channel. I was myself kind of a typecast as, oh, Mike hates YA. No, I hate YA tropes. I hate love triangles. I hate insta-love. I hate girl boss. Things like that that just drive me absolutely crazy. Wish fulfillment. That's the stuff about YA I don't like. There's lots of good middle grade 
or young adult books out there that provide those things that you want without those things that you don't want. And I feel like they're a really good option because again, I feel like it's, it's I don't want to call them like a lesser read, but I'm just like, you don't have to work hard. You know, there's a lot of these fancy books. Like, yeah, you got to put in some research. You got to put in some thought. You got to think about some of these things. Some of these, it's just, it's just, it's fun rides. It's like going and seeing a popcorn flick. I think about book series like, like The Maze Runner. Those are really good. Ark of a Scythe, which I'm reading right now. And I'm reading Percy Jackson and with my kids each night, you know, before bed and having a great time with that. So it, it, I know that some people feel like, oh, it's below them. Oh, it's beneath them. Again, if you're starting to suffer from some burnout, why not pick up something easy? And I feel like middle grade books, uh, you know, young adult books, they can be that. I don't feel like, I mean, you go back and read some things you like. Like I go back and read Chronicles of Narnia. I love it. It's charming. It is timeless. I never feel like Harry Potter is a book. I'm like, oh, well, I'm too old for Harry Potter now. I, know, I don't know why why people have such put negative connotations on young adult. Now, I, I do think that sometimes, yeah, maybe broaden your horizons a little bit if you read just young adult. But again, that's a personal thing. I don't feel like the young adult genre really gets treated fairly by a lot, mostly by epic fantasy, adult epic fantasy readers. And I understand where they're coming from. But I also think, hey, yeah, you know how you forget that feeling like, oh, I don't really want to read anything right now because everything's 900 pages and has a cast of thousands? Pick up one of these young adult series. And I think that you can see that there is some really good stuff out there without those tropes that some of us do not like. Like, I don't like those tropes. It's perfectly fine if you like them. I'm not, I'm not really into that. And lastly, I got to say, Comics and manga is always going to be a good escape. And yes, it counts as reading, guys. Just because it has pictures, to me, it doesn't mean it doesn't count as reading. Uh, all the arcs in comics can be kind of be broken up into, you know, usually they're usually like 12 issue arcs or something like that or less. You know, that's just kind of how comics have worked for 100 years, you know. And I feel like I've gotten into much more manga recently. Because I feel like Western comics kind of lost the plot. And for me, I was like, I still want my stories to be about plot, not about, you know, ideas. And uh, I feel like manga has really kind of picked up that ball of, you know, me being a comics reader, uh, Western comics, U.S. comics, for, you know, 30 plus years of my life and then just becoming disillusioned with them. And when I finally broke down and gave manga a try, I was like, oh, they're still making character and storyline the number one priority. Hey, look, this art's really good too. So uh, I know there are a lot of people who are apprehensive. I was, for the longest time, guys, I was like, I'm never going to read manga. Now I love Berserk. I'm reading One Piece right now. Vinland Saga is one of my favorites. But there's several I feel like you can kind of go into and just, uh, you know, hey, I'm having a hard time with some of these books I'm reading right now. Let me get some comics. And I think some good ones that I'd recommend. Look, Garth Ennis is one of my favorites ever. You're doing Western comics. He did Preacher. He did Hellblazer, John Constantine. He did The Boys, which I know a lot of people are watching on Amazon right now. Uh, those are three great comics that I feel like anyone can really enjoy. And again, each one of these have, you know, 12 to 15 issue arcs within the story that you can kind of break up and go along at your own pace. And that's always a fun way to go. Uh, I got to say, if you're more looking from like epics, like I said, you are really big into epic fantasy. Uh, obviously, Berserk's a good one. It has a lot more world building than I thought when I went into it. Vinland Saga, if you're into like Viking Norse stuff, you're going to absolutely love it. It's 100% serious. I know a lot of people are, are kind of like, eh, I don't know about manga because they have all the antics and stuff. And Vinland Saga is just straight. Like if you watch like Vikings or The Last Kingdom, I think you're going to really love that. And yeah, I got to admit, guys, I was wrong. One Piece is actually quite good. One Piece is wacky. It's fun. But it has this very serious moments that kind of hit you in the heart. And the world building is very very good. So again, you want looking for some epics. I'd say Vinland Saga and One Piece would be what I recommend. But there's really an endless wealth of comics out there, guys. You know, I talk about how I feel like Western comics kind of fall down. Hey, turn the clock back. Go back and find some of those good ones. I mean, I read Spider-Man for almost 25 years every single week, you know. There's plenty of great stuff still out there that might not have been discovered by you. But that's kind of what I go with, guys. I mean, reading Burnout, yeah, very, very real. But there are ways to get around it. And I say sometimes... It's okay to kind of take the foot off the gas and say, why don't I read something that maybe will be below my reading level, maybe. But you know what? It will keep me reading and it'll keep me kind of recharge the batteries for me to build up the strength to go back to one of those large cast, large page count, large number of books in a series and kind of attack it with a new 
energy. At least that's kind of what I do. So yeah, I have reading slumps, guys. It happens to all of us. And what I do, hey, what do I do? I start reading some One Piece. I start reading, you know, some, some Ark of a Scythe, stuff like that. I kind of just feel like that is the best way to reinvigorate yourself. So that's what I have, guys. What about you? What are some slump busters, I guess you would call them, that you get into when you are having a tough time with some of those big epic reads? Why don't you drop in the comments, guys, and let me know, and I will talk to you there.